two months ago, we moved to Alaska and I'm still finding it a struggle every day to get myself up before the sun rises. It's darker in the winter and so our bodies are still adjusting. We have errands to run today. I thought that I would take you guys along for the next couple of days. And before we head out, I'm gonna do some simple skincare and just get my hair thrown up so I'm ready for the day. I wanted to share with you guys my Tubes & Co skincare regimen. Super easy, ladies. I don't have time for all the fuss and the drama. <laughs> so it's a three-step process for me. I cleanse with my C. Buckthorn Cleansing Oil from Tubes & Co. And then I moisturize with my Glow Serum that I mix with my Tallow Balm. And it's natural, it's organic, chemical-free. You can feel good about putting this on your skin. Since we moved to Alaska, we have been living in dry heat as we heat the cabin with a wood-burning stove. And my skin has been so dry, like itchy dry. And I'm so grateful that before we came to Alaska, I found out about Tubes & Co and I started using it. I use the tallow balm all over my body. Absolutely love it. If you guys have never heard of Tubes & Co Organics, I highly recommend that you look into it, ladies and gentlemen small family owned homesteading family creating these products and Emily really takes the time to make sure that the products are clean and sourced from reputable places. Make sure before you head out today that you go to the video description and check out my link where I have a 10% off coupon for you for your entire Tubes & Co order. Bradley, come. Sit. Sit. Come. Well, hi guys. Today we are doing something really fun and exciting. We're adding something to the homestead that is much needed. Uh, we want we want these. <laughs> They're gonna come in handy for a lot of different things. And today we're picking up one of three. Uh, that is gonna be a snow machine. Whoop, whoop, Watsons are picking up a snow machine. So we actually are buying a used one. We do not wanna buy a brand new one. They can get really expensive. And we're not looking for like you know, sportiness, we're really looking for utility, something that we can use to pull the sleds around for firewood, game when we go hunting and things like that. So this is the first of hopefully three in the near future. We're heading over today to pick up the first one. We thought it'd be fun to take you guys along with us. We made it home. We met with the seller and we picked up a Polaris 900. It's a 2006. Runs really good. Looks good. Joe looks good on it. 
So I'm excited. This is the start of the adventure, right? I think tomorrow we're gonna go meet up with another seller for a potential Polaris for him. I think it was, was it a 400 Joe or a 450? Yeah, a 320. Huh? That was a 320 or 340 or whatever. Oh. It was 300 and something actually. So a little bit smaller, which will be better for Parker. He has never driven a snow machine. So I think something smaller will be better for him. So we'll probably take you guys with us tomorrow too when we go pick that one up if it's a decent one. But let me show you guys what we got. excited as I am about the snow machine I'm a mom <laughs> and Parker oh, he is a little accident prone he is all boy broke his arm last year I mean he's been to the ER many times and so it gives me a little bit of anxiety right with the snow machine but we're just going to teach him the proper way to ride it and safety and all that good stuff but It'll be so good for hauling wood and all the things that normally Joe and I just use, you know, brute strength. <laughs> uh, this is really gonna come in handy. I know Joe's excited. He's been talking about this since we got here and he's just very particular, you know, he's a mechanic, so he's very particular about what he gets. I think this is a really good snow machine and I think it's also gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna head inside and start dinner. I think I'm gonna make a meatloaf tonight with mashed potatoes and gravy and some corn on the cob. So while they're out having fun, I'm gonna get to it.
to take a shower. <gasps> the amount of drool. Huh? Kiss. Uh -uh. Sit. Kiss. Bradley. Kiss. Oh. <laughs> oh! Oh, that's a good boy. That's a horrible trick to teach him. I told you it's like a sponge. Oh, it's like, a, it is literally like a sponge. It is so Sit. moist. Sit. I'm pretty sure it went through the cracks of my teeth. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Joe, don't be cheating this time. <laughs> Babe, you cheat every time we play this, and <laughs> yeah, I never okay. win because of it. Babe, don't be cheating. Let's not talk about cheating. Ooh. Well, skip -o. skip -o on the first turn. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I told you he's a cheater. Joe, don't be hating. I have a really good feeling about this game tonight. Just saying. Do you feel like you're gonna win? I do. I feel like I'm gonna win. 
since he's cheated on all the other ones. Kind of like how my knees ache before it rains. Mm -hmm. I feel these things, Parker. So it is the next day and we are on the road again. Uh, I actually just got out of my therapeutic massage appointment. You guys know I've been doing physical therapy and therapeutic massage on my neck since I pulled my neck out for probably about, I've been doing the appointments for about four weeks now, I think. So uh, this is only my second massage, but I'm like completely relaxed right now. Probably looking all crazy because of the oils that she uses. <laughs> But uh, what an amazing massage today. And I'm hoping with the physical therapy coupled with the massages um, I'm doing once once a week with that, it's really going to help me heal from whatever injury caused my neck problem. So anyway, we just got done with that appointment. Uh, I feel like I'm still kind of waking up for that. But we stopped at the Polaris store. Joe ran in. I think he's got to get something for his snow machine. And then we are just waiting for the seller to get off work that we have been communicating with about getting Parker's snow machine and then we're gonna meet up with him and hopefully if it's a decent snow machine, get that for Parker. And it's yeah. kinda, of, <laughs> Parker says yeah. It's kinda of cool because this guy said he had this for his children. It is an older snow machine but it looks really nice and it looks like he did some upgrades to it to make it even more kid friendly like he put, I don't know all the right terms, but he put like smaller throttles on it or whatever all these things for like little kid hands and a new seat I think it has a new seat and things like that but anyway we're gonna go check it out hopefully it's decent and there's a couple other ones I'm checking out for me I haven't decided on one yet so yeah we'll get to me but for now today the goal is getting Parker a snow machine and then while Joe is in the store I was gonna chat with you guys really quickly about something else that we're going to be doing most likely today for those of you that have followed us for quite a while, you know um, we used to have two cats when we lived in Virginia, Jack and Leo. We had them for about three years and we adopted them from the Humane Society there in Virginia. When we decided to move to Alaska, we made the decision as a family to rehome the cats in Virginia which we did. They were adopted out. They're well taken care of. We even followed up with the Humane Society to make sure um, that they were adopted and found new homes. But the biggest thing was, and it was hard, it was a hard decision and it was heartbreaking, mainly for me and Parker because Jack was pretty much my cat and Leo was Parker's cat. And we had them from the time that they were like three months old until what, two and a half, three years old or so. But the problem was the logistically, like the whole trip getting to Alaska. We had the truck and the trailer. We had both dogs in the kennels. We had the entire trip across country, pulling into hotels every night, lugging in the kennels, all the things. And then we also had the ferry ride from Washington up to Alaska. And as you guys know, if you followed that journey, we were not allowed to bring the animals with us in the cabin on the ferry. They had to stay below in the car deck. And we were only allowed down there at certain times to let the dogs out to go to the bathroom. So the thing is, is like, I didn't know what that was going to look like all the way across country, like trying to get down there and get the litter box cleaned out, trying to feed and water them. Like, I just didn't know if it was going to be a lot of stress for the cats. I am recalling some of the hateful comments that we got when we, some people had asked us, where are the cats? We don't see the cats. And so we told them our family made the decision to rehome them. And then of course you always get the people that have an opinion and think that they know best. And you know, we're just horrible people because we rehome them. But you know, horrible people would have been dropping them off on the side of the road or driving out into the wilderness and dropping them off. We didn't do that. We ensured that they were adopted out 
and found loving homes and we miss the cats terribly and it was a very hard decision to make. So that's that. I did tell Parker recently, he has been so sad about the cats and we've seen some pictures on my phone and watched a couple of our old YouTube videos where the cats are there and last night Parker just broke out into tears he's just sad about it and I told him I said you know this is our forever home we are not moving again unless something ridiculous happens that is unforeseen as of now we're not moving again we plan on staying right where we're at so maybe we could look into adopting new kittens for the homestead. And I personally would like to have them because we do have mice. We've already had a couple issues with mice at the cabin. Joe had to put out some traps and stuff, but we, um, some and ran off and we actually have a neighbor that had has cats and her cat had kittens. It is time for them to be homed. They are old enough to go to homes. And so we have decided today to take a look at them and see if there are a couple of kittens that we would like to have in our family. And we do want two again. We like to get pairs, same thing with the dogs, so they can have a companion. Um, and very happy that we decided to get Bradley and Gunner because they're besties, you know what I'm saying? They love each other, huh, Gunner? Yeah. So if we're gonna get cats, I think we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna get two cats again. But. The neighbor's coming over tonight, bringing the kittens in a box for us to look at them and decide if we do want to indeed get a couple of them and to pick the ones we want. And so I think the Watson family is going to invite two new kitties into our lives Yay. and hopefully they will be our forever cats and we are very excited about that. Right, Parker? Yeah. You excited? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's nice to fill the hole, right? When um. When Stryker died, that was our Dalmatian. When he died last year, you know, you never really replace that animal, but when you get a new one, they do bring joy into your life and it does kind of help fill that, that empty space. So hopefully getting these new kitties, starting that new relationship with Parker, that will fill that little bit of a gap that he's got since we lost our other kitties in Virginia when we rehomed them. So that's going down today. All right, so we made it home. We got Parker's Polaris. You can hear Joe outside with it now, but I didn't have time to show you guys just yet because we had to rush home to meet our neighbor. She's on her way over with the kittens. She's bringing the whole box of all the kittens so Parker can choose the two that he would like to have. She'll be here at 5.30. Coming up. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how Bradley and Gunner do with the kittens. They have never lived with cats and they are prey animals. They like to run after small creatures. So that will be interesting. But in my experience with bringing cats into the home, usually cats don't mess around. Like they will box a dog up. So I think as long as the kittens show them who's boss right out the gate. I think that Bradley and Gunner are, are gonna be afraid of them, to be honest with you. Joe's outside right now having a little too much fun down in the clearing around the pond. He is breaking trail. That way tomorrow, him and Parker can ride all over the clearing. It's pretty thick down there. It's pretty like untouched. So it's funny, I'm watching him do circles, making a trail for them. They're gonna have a lot of fun. Parker is so excited. Parker, they'll be here, buddy. <laughs> They're here. <laughs> are you excited? Yeah. Oh, the puppies are excited. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's like a bag of just preciousness. That I can't was stand Rascal. It. <gasps> That's Rascal? Yeah. And that one's Vessel. Hi. Look at all of them. Oh my goodness. I think this one's from Grandma's house. All right, guys, we did it. <laughs> Out of all those adorable little kittens, we picked two of them. So this is the first one that popped out of the bag, which is why I chose him. He's quite feisty, and I think we need feistiness with the dogs. Uh, so we got an orange one, and then we got the only gray one that they had. Parker, come here. Mm, he looks just like Leo. <laughs> he does look a lot like Leo, huh? So, we've got to decide on names and we've got to introduce the dogs to them. So, we'll see how this goes. Oh, what is that in the face? Bradley. Oh, he's playful. 
Easy. Easy. He's puffing up. Easy. Gunner, Parker, don't let that cat run right now. Yes. Pull him back. Gunner. Well, good morning. Interesting evening with the kitties. Uh, so the orange one, we have named him Rusty. And the gray one, we've named him Asher. They're boys, brothers. <laughs> they have fallen in love with Parker. They've figured out, and we kind of designed it this way until we get them used to the dogs and the dogs used to them, that the upstairs loft is their safe place in Parker's room. We have a baby gate up here, so y'all know if the dogs really wanted to get up there, they could. However, ever since we've had that baby gate, which we had before we even got the kittens, the dogs know that as like a visual barrier. So they know that if that's shut, that they're not allowed to go up there. And the cat's litter box for now, food and water, everything is up in Parker's room and that's kind of been their safe haven. They slept with Parker. So freaking cute. But we've been trying to get them used to the dogs, kind of, uh, you know, the dogs look at them like a tasty little snack. That's the problem. And these dogs particularly love to chase. And so putting the kittens down on the ground, letting them walk at all, the dogs are just like honed in on them. But they're doing good. We worked with them this morning with some food and treats to kind of get them used to the cats being up on them. And they're doing a lot better. She said they're about 12 or 13 weeks old, but I don't think they're that old. They look more like they're maybe eight weeks old to me. Um, about two months so they're still very tiny and don't really have that uh, personality yet to paw and pop at the dogs when the dogs get in their personal space unfortunately they'll get there but they're just so tiny right now they don't really have that we are gonna give the kittens a much needed bath today both of them are you first Yes, you are. Yeah, you're kind of stinky. His brother's like, hi, I gotta get him a bath up first. You ready to give him a bath? Yeah. All right. He's not gonna be too happy about it. Mm -mm. Here you go, baby. Big shirts. It's like the perfect temperature. Is it? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. Mommy, I don't you're want fine. Look, I know. Let's make it go fast, okay? Stars, I wanna take a trip to Mars, nothing 
someone else I'm gonna be myself I'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes Try not to hold me What do you think? I like it. You like it? Yeah. All right. Now when you get out there and you're going faster, P, you gotta put your helmet on, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, Mama needs to keep you alive because I love you too much. Just gotta wear your helmet, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at that. P. Diddy got a snow machine. Word.
Alright, so Joe, just be normal, please. For a minute, please. But don't look all grumpy either. Sometimes you look grumpy. Oh, he's very grumpy now. Being Mr. Grumpy Pants. Can we take it? What? How are you doing? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Just like his mom. We used to have a typewriter. We used to have a typewriter. Remember? My mom used to have one. And she would... Why are you saying duck? I'm not. You said duck, 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 duck. I said duck, 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 duck. Mm -hmm. duck, duck, duck. What are you doing? You didn't even give me any. A whole other plate? You think this is Thanksgiving? You gave me like two bites last Joe! Time. Nostrils are open. Lift your eyebrows. Okay, don't do that with your eyeballs though. <laughs> you said to lift my eyebrows. Yeah, I'm just gonna like, keep your, try to keep your eyeballs straight. I mean like lift my, lift my eyebrows, show me pee. Okay. Open the nostrils, mouth closed. mouth closed, lift the eyebrows. Oh, you make like a V, you make like a V with your eyebrow. Why are you smiling? All right, I'm sorry, right, I'm sorry, on. I'm sorry, okay. I can't do it, I can't do it. Hold on, stop laughing. Stop laughing. You stop, but on. you're funny looking. All right, so let's, let's try it, okay. So you said mouth closed, nostrils open, eyebrows up, right? Not with your eyes, just keep your eyes normal. And lift your eyebrows all the way up. And don't move your head. How about if I just do candy? Cause candy's easy, she comes easy to me. <laughs> How do y'all get some wrinkles right there? Oh, Parker. You look like a bug. Okay. Cause, okay, so Parker's instructions, he says. <laughs> yeah, he said lift your eyebrow. Close your mouth. Babe, okay. look at me, look at me, look at me. Close your mouth, your open your nostrils big. And lift your eyebrows, and then, babe, you look so scared. Okay, so when you open your nostrils, your eyebrows are already so open up. So look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. You just look so. <laughs> you had to open your nostrils. I did. Open them bigger, babe. Why you? Why do you go cross-eyed? <laughs> You're just like Candy and Billy Bob. <laughs> They're cross-eyed too. Yeah. Joe. You look like- Is there corn in there? No, babe, you look like a Scottish warrior with this red beard. Okay, that was disgusting. Babe, you know you're Scottish though, so like, I kinda dig that. If I buy you a kilt- No. Would you wear it? What if it's a long kilt? Why are you talking like that? But you can't wear a, wear a shirt. No shirt, kilt, and this red beard. Oh! oh! Ready? Mm -hmm. Just don't laugh, because I won't be able to do it if you laugh, okay? All right. Two, why go cross eyed? I don't know why my eyes always go crossed. Okay, you said so. There you go. No, don't do it. Don't. <laughs> yep. I'm trying not to cross my eyes. <laughs> it's not working out. Okay. <laughs>